today's tip, always bring a nice warm jacket with you up the top of a mountain. Because even when you think, even when it is a nice day, that wind gets you. Okay, let's talk. Today, we are at the top of a mountain. And today's mountain is located in the, the county of Kerry, in the vicinity of Killarney National Park. And it is called Talk Mountain. Says this is easy. There's been so many false summits that I'm actually scared about this being the top here. There's only one way to find out. Top. <laughs> this. This is the top. Woo! I did this a few years ago with a friend and I remember it being a lot easier than it was this morning. I didn't set enough time aside. I thought it'd take an hour. It took me just over an hour but then I was a little bit late starting and blah 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 I should have set more time aside and it was a stunning sunrise and I missed the best of it which is frustrating but I'm here I'm doing it I got up I came out and it's still beautiful now I'm, I can't complain can I really it's me own doing anyway this week's challenge is ba -ba -ba -ba! panoramas which being up the top of the mountain works quite nicely so that worked in my favor this morning rather than a macro like last week's challenge which is <laughs> oh that was frustrating now what is the point of a panorama well let's demonstrate with this picture here it's a lovely picture there's nothing wrong with it per se but we could make it a little bit better the sky and the land there in the foreground don't really add to the picture that much and really we want the focus to be on that middle bit of the picture with all the beautiful land and the beautiful light. So what we can do, we could just take a one big picture like this, crop out the top, crop out the bottom, and then we're left with a lovely panorama. But there's a few problems with this. First of all, the lens you have might not be wide angle enough. Secondly, if you want to put it on the wall, then you might find that your camera doesn't have enough megapixels. So what we can do is take a series of pictures and then when we add them together, zoom in, we can really see them extra details that wouldn't have been there if we'd just taken the one image and cropped it out. Then when we print it out and put it on our living room wall, it's gonna look so lovely and we're gonna wanna keep looking at it because there's so much detail and it just fits the shape of the room so much better. Panorama, I've taken a panorama shot, I've taken two. Using the side light for the first one, looking across the beautiful locks here, or lakes. You've got Muckross Lake, which is um, part of Muckross House there, which uh, has a nice grounds and it's like an, an old stately castle home type thing and a nice little coffee shop at the back so that's one part and then they kind of connect up slightly and then the bigger one Loch Lian. so the first one was shot across Loch Lian, getting all the beautiful side light hitting all the beautiful trees and houses and the lock there right okay to do this i'm gonna level this tripod now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use the level function on the camera here to make sure each shot 
is level. I'm keeping the horizon just at the top. So I've kind of got an idea of whether I'm going completely off. And also I'm shooting a stop down F11 ISO 50 because as I move it around, I don't want to adjust the exposure and I want to make sure that I've got enough room for if it gets any brighter at any point. I know I can bring the shadows up quite a lot with these rules. I'm going to do this, do a series of shots and then we'll talk about what we've done. Let's start. This tripod seems to be surprisingly exactly level and every shot I'm taking, I want to make sure I overlap it by at least, you know, a quarter of the previous shot. Then when we come to joining these things in Photoshop, there will be a lot easier to match up. talk about technique when it comes to panoramas the first thing that really is going to help you with a good panorama is a good old sturdy tripod it's worth investing in a nice sturdy tripod especially if you're going to be going up mountains or on long walks to a location the carbon fiber is worth paying a little bit more for the lightness and also on a cold morning it's not as cold to touch you know as a aluminium what else do you need well, let's talk about bull heads. Yeah, let's talk about round bull head. Let's talk about bull heads, bull heads, bull, bull heads. With my setup here, I have kind of two different tripod heads going on. What we have here at the top is the Manfrotto 496 RC2, kind of a classic bull thread. And uh, that allows me to kind of, was it 180 in that direction? I can then spin it around and do 90s. You know, considering this is a bit of weight, it holds it very well at 90 degrees like that. So this is, you know, a good solid ball head, middle of the range when it comes to value. And I, I mean, if you've ever looked at ball heads, you can spend a lot of money. Two things it doesn't have, even though I have the ability to spin on its base, I have to loosen this knob here which then loosens this top bit ideally when you're doing a panorama you don't want to loosen this you want to just spin the whole base on a flat plane also it doesn't have a level bubble built into it so it's hard to tell whether it's level you're just kind of guessing even though the camera i have has a level built into it i mean for example basically the sony a6000 i used for quite a few years before i upgraded it never had a bubble built into the camera software so I had to buy a little one that kind of sat in the uh, hot shoe there. The options are I could get a ball head similar to this, but then has a base that has a, a rotating 360 leveled base built into it. Or the other cheaper option, which I think I paid about £20 off eBay or Amazon, was this, I believe it's like a newer, I'll have to, I'll have to pop it up, but it's uh, PB75 is the code on it. And it's got a bubble level built into it. And this screw here, I undo that. And now I can rotate the whole base without loosening the top part here. There are a few issues though, as I will now show you. So this is a handy dandy feature that I can undo. I now twist around. One issue is a lot of the time I'm not using this base. So this can actually slowly just kind of come undone without you realizing. And if it's not leveled, you get a bit of creep where you set your camera up and it's slowly creeping because of the weight of the camera. And the fact that this isn't level, it will slowly creep until you, so you have to remember to do that up. Another annoying thing, this, this is annoying. These two aren't really designed to work in harmony with each other. I brought two pieces together that weren't entirely designed with each other in mind. So you get annoying things like this. So you have to kind of, I've got to now move that out of the way to then be able to do that up. The last annoying thing is the fact that this bubble here is half covered up by the bull head above it. As I was mentioning before, they're not designed to work 
together. So that's a temporary solution that I've been using for many years now and it's not that often I do the panoramas. I'm not a massive panorama guy. I would definitely say though, the minimum you need to get is some kind of leveling bubble on the tripod. If it's built into the tripod on the head, even better. To demonstrate the difference between a level tripod and unlevel tripod, here's with the level tripod. As I spin it around, you'll see the level on the camera stays level all the way around the rotation and also the horizon stays pretty level, even though it does move downwards slightly. Whereas with the unlevel tripod, it's starting off level on the camera, and as we spin it around, you'll see that it will slowly go off horizontal, as as well moving further down away from the horizon line. Of course, you don't need to do anything. You could just hand hold and then stitch it together in Lightroom. Or even, I mean, phones now, they have a feature built in where you just spin it round and it's probably taking hundreds and hundreds of pictures and then stitching them together. But the issue is you'll find with the smartphone, you have to be super careful. You get massive artifacting if anything moves, things like that. other one shooting straight towards the sun towards the uh, Kalani mountains here and getting some kind of really contrasty shadows silhouettes there's a lock over there and uh, the sun had to HDR that panorama so we'll see how they turn out in Photoshop I think I'm gonna do another one over here as well let's turn to the brightest point that really in fact I'm gonna need to bracket all this Right, free, free image, two second timer. Right, overlap it again. Okay, okay. Relax, Jamie, relax. So this week's challenge is uh, panoramas. And uh, keep in mind, they don't have to be a horizontal traditional panorama. They can be vertical, they could be diagonal. I mean, going bad, they could be a 360 vertical and horizontal. They just stitch pictures together. That's a panorama. Be creative, do it in the way you want. I've done a very traditional panorama this morning. Three or four shots stitched together horizontally in a very landscapey way. I've not really pushed the boundaries at all this morning. And uh, I think that's because, if I don't fall over, I think that's because I'm a bit frustrated this morning. All that time, that energy going into getting up early, driving down here, all the hard work climbing this mountain, and I missed the sunrise. Even though it's a lovely view at the top and I got some good light still, just frustrated with myself. But this is the name of the game, isn't it? Perseverance. Perseverance, you've got to keep trying. I'll come back another day, I'll get that sunrise. That is for sure.